Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Coming to you from the great Pacific Northwest. We truly serve an awesome God. A God who created us. A God who loves us. A God whose plans have spanned from before time began to the time ends as we know it here on earth. God loves us that much. Praise God for that. A word of encouragement comes from Matthew chapter 1, beginning at verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be a child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived is hers from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. The virgin will be a child and will give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And as I read these words, I'm just uh, reminded of, of God's love for all of us, God's love for humanity. Um, not only did God have a plan from the beginning, he, he prophesied about it. He, he talked about it. He talked about the fact that, that the day would come, that, that he would come, uh, the second person of the Trinity, the, that the Son, uh, who you know, is God, uh, and, and God in human form here on earth, uh, a representation, if you will, of God, um, you know, but God himself, fully divine human, uh, fully human, would come to earth uh, to, to teach us, to, to uh, live among us, and to die on a cross for us, that we might have eternal life. Uh, that's an amazing God. Uh, I think oftentimes as we would picture what we would create, it's like if it gets bad, we're just going to you know, start over. Um, what, what a, you know, why keep going? You know, you, sometimes you got to, you know, just, you know, just give up. And I could see where God could have wanted to give up on us time and time again, at least from a human perspective, uh, on mankind itself. And yet God doesn't. God has this plan. And as a long ago said before this happened, that he was coming. And that he was sending his son, that the, that the Savior would come um, and it would be called Emmanuel, God with us. And so the birth of Jesus comes through this idea of impossibilities. Um, Mary gets pregnant as a virgin. Uh, she has this child. It's a, it's a child of God. Um, and it is God with us called Emmanuel. Uh, there's just so much food for thought, if you will, that if we take time to think about it, what all this really means. I mean... Uh, God came knowing exactly what his role would be here on earth. And, um, you know, it could have been easy. Uh, in fact, it was expected by the Jewish people that God would come riding in, if you will, from the east and that, that he would take over and that the Jews would be put back in charge. And they just didn't have much of a clue of what God was really tr trying to do. And, and, and of all eternity, and what this really meant. They were expecting an earthly kingdom. And certainly, even in its form, uh, except for God's plan, Jesus didn't have to come as a child. Jesus could have came out of the east, if you will, um, as the, the starry night and the star shone. I mean, it could have been Christ coming to earth that way and, and kind of even still going through what he did. But he came as a baby uh, in a manger in Bethlehem, as the, the lowest of the low, if you will, as a peasant uh, child. And yet look what God did with that. And I think that tells us lots of things. It also tells us, one of the things it tells us is what God can do with our lives. It doesn't matter what our upbringing in is. It doesn't matter where we started. Uh, what matters is that we belong to God. And when we're in God's hands, God can do mighty things with our lives. I don't know about you today, but as we think about uh, the Christmas season, uh, the Advent season, as we think about, where, hey, we're, we're basically 10 days away from our Christmas celebrations. And, of course, uh, we're hoping that if you're in the area, join us in church on Sunday morning on, on Christmas Day. But as we think about these next 10 days, let's think about the plans that God had for us and has for us. God's plans didn't end with Jesus Christ coming to earth and dying on our cross and rising again. God's plans are still continuing. And as we think about him fulfilling these plans here, he's also going to fulfill uh, the prophecies in our own lives. One of those prophecies, uh, one of those statements that God has made or promises God has made is he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Um, and he knows the plans he has for us. Uh, all those things God will fulfill if we simply trust in him. Are you trusting him today? Let's just pray and ask the Lord to, to uh, remind us of his great love for us. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, the advent, for the coming of the Christ child. Thank you, O Lord, that we're able to celebrate it today the way that we are. Father, so many today are, are struggling with the hatred that's going on around us, uh, the persecution, um, the, the people who are against 
uh, our beliefs as, as Christians and who believe against you ultimately, Lord, because they don't believe in you. Father, there's times that we want to react and, and, and we love to take up force, and yet we know that Jesus Christ was about peace and about love. Father, help us today to love one another. Help us to love those who would hate us, despise us, not want to serve us or any of the above. Help us, O oh Lord, to show your love as Christ would have showed your love. Father, as we think of, uh, again, the Advent season and the Christ shall come, Lord, may we have your spirit and your mind in all that we do. Father, we believe in your promises. We believe that you'll walk beside us, that you'll guide us, that your Holy Spirit is, is leading us now. Father, help us to be calm and hear your voice. Father, we also just believe that uh, you have a plan and purpose for us. And so, Lord, use this time uh, to remind us of your purpose and your plan. Father, may we, may we fulfill it not because of our ability, but because of what you're about to do through us. May we simply have a willing and humble hearts as your servants. And, Father, may you use us, and may your light shine through us to your glory. Father, thank you for all that you're about to do this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There you have it. God loves you. Hey, we, we love you as well. I hope you have a wonderful day today, and I hope you'll join us again tomorrow. God loves you, and he'll be with you. See you soon.